Americans have become very trusting when it comes to Big Pharma and the products they make. We love the idea of silver bullets that can help us with our symptoms, and we don't really think about some of the things that can go bad if the side effects or complications uh, develop. The purple pill is no exception. In fact, it's one of the things we've learned to depend on more than most other pills. Uh, we've, we know that there are lots of problems with these pills. We know that they also do a fantastic job of relieving indigestion uh, and, and helping us if we have ulcers or if we have problems like GERD or, or if we're trying to prevent ulcers or maybe problems from Barrett's esophagus. So there are some pluses from that that we've been uh, taught that have some value. The problem is, is we don't really look at the adverse effects, the headaches, the GI symptoms that occur from it, the fact that we don't absorb B12 or calcium or magnesium as we should anymore because we block the acids in the stomach and acid is required for the absorption of those things. And over time, if we don't absorb uh, a calcium, uh, we're at risk for osteoporosis. And after a few years, the risk for osteoporosis goes up nearly 50%. And because we can't absorb B12, we, uh, B12 after a few years, that risk of senile dementia that's related to B12 deficiency uh, will also go up in the range of 18 or 20 percent. And then there are other problems with it as well. You know, the magnesium deficiency, we can't absorb iron uh, because iron depends that too. So if we have a problem with anemia, that becomes a big issue. We also know that if we take the drug, that purple pill, for about eight weeks, 40 percent of us will become dependent on it because as soon as you stop taking the pill, there's a rebound production of acid that gives you indigestion again and drives you back to taking the pill. And that happens, as I said, 40% of the time. That's a major deal. So a lot of people become relatively addicted to it, although I would call that more of a dependency than an addiction. It also blocks the effects of Plavix, you know, that anticoagulant that's used for people who have heart disease or who have stroke. Uh, it increases the prorhythmic uh, effects uh, uh, that cause atrial fibrillation or atrial tachycardia, fast heartbeats, it can be a real problem by about four times over normal. It also causes an increase in risk for pneumonias for people in the hospital. And just recently an article came out talking about the fact that it increases the risk for developing a severe colitis, an enterocolitis called C. difficile enterocolitis in the hospital by 340 percent. I mean, that's staggering. Now, you may not know what this illness is, but take it from me, having seen a number of these cases throughout my career, they are severe life-threatening cases where there's profound diarrhea, there's ulcers, uh, there's, uh, you can have perforations of the colon, you can have paralysis of the colon, and maybe 5-10% of people who get this may actually eventually die from it. So it's not to be taken lightly. So when you have a, a drug that seems like it's magic because it does so many good things, and you watch those direct-to-consumer ads that tell you you can take a Pepsi first and then go, go eat the whole pizza and you don't have to worry about it. Nice thought, but it's really a silly thing to rely on when it has all these potential side effects and when you shouldn't be doing that anyway. We should always be looking for the underlying cause of why we're not feeling well. What's the cause of our illness? Why did our body let us down? Or did it point out to us that we're doing something that doesn't work? That's what a real doctor does, what a real healer does, is looking for what the underlying issues are and dealing with those. And unfortunately, what we're taught in medical school and in our internship and residencies and fellowships is that drugs can do the job for us, so we don't have to do all that. But what we're finding is that a lot of people now are overtreated, the side effects, so-called side effects that aren't side effects at all, the expected effects in a certain number of people are occurring uh, as we expect them to. Uh, they are pointed out in the direct-to-consumer ads, but they're done in a way where there's soft music and we're not really listening because patients and doctors are looking for what? A solution to their problems. They're not looking at what, what, what happens if something goes wrong. So when we look at these purple pills, these acid blockers, should be thinking twice before we just take them on a prolonged basis because all you have to do is take it for 30 days in the case of being in the hospital and your risk for C. difficile colitis is going to go up 340 percent.